Greetings YouTube, the doctor is in, Dr. Urias Papers here coming at you with another commentary on Dungeons and Dragons and today on the Doctor Spell Prognosis we're going to talk about the spell Insect Plague and more importantly we're going to talk about how you can do 8d10 piercing damage around with the spell. But first don't forget to hit that subscribe button, if you like this video hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments please leave a question or comment and don't forget to hit that notification bell. All right. We're giving Insect Plague a B+. Plus. It has got a con save in it, and if it was a deck save, I'd be giving this an A- minus at least. I really like this spell a lot. It's a 5th level spell. It takes one action. It has a massive range of 300 feet, and it is a 20-foot radius spell, so it is very fireball-like, except for a few caveats, and they're good ones. So it's verbal, somatic, and material component. Material component is worthless, so you don't have to worry about it. It is usable by clerics, druids, sorcerers, nature domain clerics, tempest domain clerics, circle of the land, desert, grassland, swamp, and underdark druids. So it's a base spell for clerics and druids and sorcerers. So bards, warlocks, and uh, wizards are out. So they're, they're not in here. But we're going to talk about something. So... This lasts a whopping 10 minutes. Now, just remember that combats usually only last about four rounds on average, so 10 minutes is a really long time. One minute is actually a long time. Do you want to concentrate on this spell? Absolutely, you want to concentrate on this spell. So, Swarming, Vitus, Locusts, I mean, you could probably, for flavor, you know, say whatever you want, but... Swarming, biting, locusts fill a 20-foot radius sphere centered on a point you choose within range. You know, you could say mosquitoes, horse flies, biting flies, loa loa red flies, uh, all, any number of nasty, nasty insects. So the sphere spreads around corners. That's good. Uh, the sphere remains for the duration, and the area is lightly obscured. So what does lightly obscured mean? I've already got it here. Lightly obscured means that uh, area, an area such as dim, light, patchy fog, or, or a bunch of insects. Creatures at disadvantage on perception checks. So that will help your rogue. So here's the first good thing about this spell. If you've got party members or allies that are very dependent on hiding, this makes them hide even easier because the subjects that are inside the plague cloud will have disadvantage on their perception checks. Okay, and this here's the second one. The sphere's area is difficult terrain, which means that they're in the very middle of it. It's going to take a while for them to get out because it's difficult terrain. If you throw plant growth down, they're not getting out. Remember, plant growth is not difficult terrain. It, it increases the distance that you travel or the difficulty by four. It is not difficult terrain. It is every foot you move counts four feet, and then this adds onto that, which is five. So if they want to move, if there's plant growth and insect plague at the same time, and they would like to move five feet, that's 25 feet of movement that they have to use. So not going anywhere. It's another great thing about this spell. So when the area appears, each creature in it must make a constitution saving throw. So that is not not when they begin their turn or when they enter. It's when it appears. Bam, they got to make a con save. A creature takes 4d10 piercing damage on a failed save and half as much on a successful one. I don't like the con save. A lot of creatures are going to be able to get around that. It's piercing damage. Now, it could be argued if this is magic piercing damage because this is a magic spell because it does have a duration. These are not permanent Uh insects they're magic insects that's up to your dm have a discussion with your dm but if our, if it is magic piercing damage then that's going to bypass mostly everything that has a uh, resistance to piercing so a creature must also make the saving throw when it enters the spell area for the first time on a turn another great feature i like in these spells if you've got allies who can push or pull you need to have a discussion with them about the spell so that when you cast it and things do get out, they can get pushed right back in. And remember, it's difficult terrain, so they're going to have a hard time getting out. This this spell is really disgusting. It's got a number of different things that really kind of add on top of the, uh, the enemies or whoever is stuck in it. In addition, if your allies can also use this spell to their advantage, that's great too. So 
So they're going to take damage when they enter it on their first, the first time on a turn, or if it ends its turn there. So you cast it, takes damage. If it can't get out, then it's going to take damage at the end of its turn as well. So here's where the 8d10 damage comes in. When you cast this spell using a spell slot of 6th level or higher, the damage increases by 1d10 for each slot above 5. 5th level, it's 4d10. At 6th level, it's 5d10. 7, 8, 9, it becomes 8d10 damage per round. 8d10 damage per round is insane. Insane. So 8 times... 5.5 is 44 damage if they fail their save per turn or 22 damage per turn if they make their save per turn. So, I mean, there's a whole bunch of nasty stuff. You could have a wizard drop Evard's Black Tentacles in there, which that'll keep them in there. Plant growth, a whole bunch of nasty things that you can do to keep them in here and keep them taking damage every single turn either when they first enter it, you know, when they enter it the first time each turn or when they get stuck in it. If you can get them stuck in it, it's great. Like a web, web works great with this. Insects don't really care about the web and they're just going to bite whatever is restrained in it. So, all right, that's what I got for everybody today. I appreciate everybody tuning in and I will catch everybody later.